So something um, I've been thinking a lot about lately is scale. Um, I was watching a interview with Neil deGrasse, is that his name? The incredible astrophysicist who is doing the redoing of the Cosmos show and is very well-spoken and charismatic. And he was on a panel and somebody asked him about UFOs. And he was, he kind of went on a rant. And one of the things that he mentioned in his rant is like, look, first of all, the presence of the building blocks of life in our, I mean, it's, it's the most common elements in the universe. And so inevitably, undoubtedly, there is life in the universe outside of what we experience on Earth. However, the scale of the universe is so vast that the, 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 the chance of any ex instance of life ever being aware of another one is that is the, 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 the impossibility, the statistically impossible that we could ever travel far enough or receive a radio wave far enough where our existence of time and their existence of time, you know, was in enough alignment with time and space that our communications or our traveling would intersect. Because keep in mind, like right now, our Voyager spacecraft is being headed out into space. It will be millions of years before it gets to some place where there may be life. And how long has, you know, human beings been on the planet? How much longer will they be on the planet? How much longer will the planet be, have life? How much longer? So even if, even if our, everything works according to plan and our message in a bottle is received, the time, the space, the distances make that kind of communication, make UFO visits very hard to make sense of with the current state of science. Aha, the current state of science. Because I'm of the belief that there is a realm beyond the dimensions that we experience as human beings. And part of what opens me to that is, is when I try to get my handle on the scale and the scope of the universe. Now you can see those models where they say, okay, if this is the earth, this pin, then this orange, you know, is the sun. And then the next farthest planet is, you know, from here to our sun. And then the next farthest, you know, and then the next universe is, and it's like, you lost me. You know, I, I really can't get my head around it. I can't comprehend the number of grains of sand on the beach, I can barely do it in a jar, you know? And so the, the more understanding I have on the scope and the scale of the universe, and that goes in both directions, out and in into the atom. I mean, the distance between atoms, you know, they say is comparable to distances between space elements. So with the scale elements so grand that I can't get my head around it, that means when my logical brain makes the argument, that's impossible. All I can say is, how would you know? How could you even comprehend of what's possible and impossible? You can't even, you can't even comprehend of what has been proven with the existing state of science. You just trust, okay, there's trillions of, okay. And so, in the same way that I can't comprehend of, I can't, visualize ultraviolet. I can, I, I gotta believe that I can't comprehend trillions. But when you start to accept that there is this scale and scope beyond what I can comprehend, then I start to say, well, that means, what if, what if that is just, what if, what if scale is exponentially beyond that? Well, that's, that's impossible. Of course it's impossible to my brain. But, you know, it's kind of that argument, what if our whole, the, the old stoner college thing, man, what if our whole universe is like one grain of sand in a whole nother universe, man? Yeah, what if? Is that crazy? Sure. For, for, for an organism existing in this state. And what about time? What about the way we experience time. We think that because we experience time chronologically at this pace, so as a car drives by, I can see it. You know, as a hummingbird wings fly, I can't see it. 
as an atom bomb explodes, there's all sorts of chemical reactions that I can't see, but boom happens. It's kind of crazy to think that other life would experience time in the same way. What if we're being visited by things constantly, but their idea of time is so different that it is not measurable by any sort of, of uh, instrument that we have, or especially our vision. Or a tree. What if a tree is doing all sorts of crazy conscious things, but we just are so out of sync in the way that we experience time that we're not aware of one another. They just like wake up one morning and go, dude, someone carved their initials into my chest. When did that happen? Go to sleep, wake up. Dude, someone just cut down on my friends. Fuck. <laughs> Think about that next time. I hope you're not cutting down too many trees. So all that I am aware of, the more I am aware of science and the more I am exposed to the world and the universe, the more I believe that the concrete walls of reality to me erode and I become more open to this kind of unknown. And I'm fine with that. I don't feel like a crazed need to understand the universe. I think that living in mystery, living in awe and wonder and oh my gosh, really? I'm in the middle of these cycles. There's this crazy infinite world smaller and a crazy infinite world larger. And there's ecosystems and biospheres and photosynthesis. And every time I eat something, that's actually sun energy gone through this. It's been eaten by this, been eaten by this. And somehow I convert it to energy and, I, and then I heal myself. What the fuck? So if that... that if, if you were explaining that to a newborn and they could have the brain power, they'd be like, what, you're, cr this is science, this is not real. In the same way now when I think about things like multiverses, like at every choice, fork in the road of, of, of life, that there is another instance of reality happening in a multiverse, in an alternate reality. All sorts of things. And that some have argued that there is actually communication and travel through those multiverses at times through things that are not explained by science, through meditation, through astral projection, through certain drug use and experimentation. And if you read some of the like Carlos Castaneda things or some uh, reports of people that have done ayahuasca and DMT journeys, maybe that's the way that foreign alien entities and, and intelligence can travel these grand spaces. It can't happen through time and space, it, but it can happen through these realms that we don't yet understand, these threads of consciousness that are beyond time and space. And so there are maybe beings. When you read things by the channels throughout history, Seth, Emmanuel, Bashar, people who, their name is Larry, they go into a trance and suddenly start sharing information that comes from, they say, an, a consciousness from another dimension, an alternate alien entity. Very often, what each of those people say overlaps. Very often to me, it makes a lot of sense. Is it truth? Ah, whoa, whoa, slow down. I'm no longer interested in what is truth. I'm interested in sitting in the question, allowing wonder, and believing in whatever it is that makes me feel at peace and helps me to be in integrity, present, and loving. And if my little bitty brain needs to make sense of it by thinking of a Christ figure or by thinking of a personality that is in control of forces in the universe, uh, okay. I've got a very limited brain. We all do. And I think we all need to forgive one another when we get attached too much to beliefs that help us to make sense of it. We need myth. We need metaphor. We need these ways to, to, so that we can put it into boxes that we can then maneuver. And then hopefully let go of those enough so that the boxes don't rule our lives. That's the kind of thing that sometimes I talk about with my mom. So yes, she's awesome. 
Now, does she go, you're totally right. She goes, oh, boo-boo. <laughs> but isn't that what a really good friend is? Someone that can hear you and still love you. So I'm grateful. Not knowing why I got so lucky to have a mom like that. Just honored by the experience of that relationship, of this relationship, of this moment. What a gift to be alive in a, in a time, be conscious in a time when a crazy thought can create a world of awareness and then I can share it with friends that I've seen and not seen and feel like we're connecting on this, this level. Thank you for being a part of this tapestry of magic. Hmm. You only live once. Enjoy the color.